the space puzzle is more of our piece of the, the space community, how we contribute to all the things that are going on in space and the complexities and bringing it all together for our leadership to be able to make timely, accurate decisions. We have a very strategic position here within the Arctic Circle. Any missile attack coming from an adversary in Europe or Asia must launch their missiles over the polar region. And Thule has been specifically designed and placed here in order to capture almost 100% of any missile assets or threats that would be coming over there. And so while all radars are important, Thule is often considered more important due to its positioning. I'm Master Sergeant Samuel Basham. I'm the Senior Enlisted Leader for the 12th Space Warning Squadron, part of Delta IV. Uh, the UEWR, or the Upgraded Early Warning Radar, is a missile warning, missile defense, and space domain awareness tracking sensor. So we have quite a bit of range in our view, reaching all the way up to uh, low Earth orbit, but with our primary mission being uh, capturing and warning the United States and our allies of ballistic missiles, namely ICBMs and SBMs, from a near-peer adversary. At the millisecond rate, we're shooting out signals to both transmit and receive at an electronically stared phase array. And that's kind of why you got this kind of monolithic looking structure out there. It kind of looks like a super villain lives here. But I can assure you that it has a high fidelity and a high capture rate. Really this entire mission here exists for the UEWR, the Upgraded Early Warning Radar, to pick up any strategic threats to the United States. Everything is harder at Thule, uh, from communications to even traveling to work. Uh, and so. While we are right now in a very pleasant spot during summer, as the storms have calmed down, we are starting to enter into what we call storm season. Uh, in storm season, we get uh, storms that are all the way up to uh, hurricane levels in the, in the Arctic Circle, dropping temperatures down to less than negative 40. So once we're isolated in those uh, heavy storm conditions, no one's coming for us. And so some of the things we have to be concerned with up here at Thule is staging individuals in our no-fail mission that has to be running 24-7, 365. And so sometimes we have to bed people down within this facility for several days at a time, isolated from an already isolated base. And this includes uh, running resources up, uh, and it includes staging uh, foods, materials, toiletries, and everything else to keep people happy and alive while still operating the mission up here. The, the guardians and airmen up here go through an extraordinary amount of isolation and uh, hardship out here. So as an SEL, uh, senior enlisted leader, while I am here to keep the mission going, really I'm here for the people. Uh, I make sure that they're healthy and well, that their needs are met, and so that really the human weapon system is being taken care of so that the, the weapon system proper is actually functioning. Integrated Tactical Warning Attack Assessment, or ITWA as we call it, is a strategic no-fail mission for all parties within the United States and our allies. So we are directly responsible for providing warning for not only the Missile Warning Center, nor NORTHCOM, US SpaceCom, US STRATCOM, but also the National Military Command Center and the Presidential uh, Emergency Operations Center as well. So our data goes up very quickly within the national chain of things. So the timeline of what things look like when an operator uh, captures a missile on the screen. So the, the radar will automatically generate what we call a launch and predicted impact. Radars are very good at predicting ballistic trajectories, which most ICBMs and LCBMs must follow in order to hit their target. So that initial sequence will appear and an alert will go out to our operators. Our operators then have 60 seconds to ensure that the system, so the radar itself, is running within its parameters, that there are no anomalies present in the system, nor is there any forms of clutter or other discrepancies. So once that has been determined, they will pass a site report of either valid, under investigation, or anomalous, depending what their findings are. Uh, and again, that must be done within 60 seconds to the Missile Warning Center. Showing up to work every day, you know that the work you're doing is crucial to protect not only the country, but the people you love back home. So you get a lot of uh, pride in the job that you do here because it's real world, it's important, and it's a no-fail mission. So we show up and we know that there's a job to do. Basically, an ops floor is run and dictated by checklists. It's important that the crew knows where to go in a checklist if something does happen. If you miss a step, something could get messed up, and then that can cause issues all over the world. For the 
purpose of training, you are the oncoming crew. The clock will be hacked to 11.30 Zulu. When the clock reads 11.30 Zulu, you may interact with the system. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Lorian Weber, and I am the Chief of Training at the 12th Space Warning Squadron here in Tilly, Greenland. So right now we're in the sim room. Our primary mission is missile warning, and so that site report is pretty much sending out that information uh, to the missile warning center, so that way it could get properly distributed. Implement site reporting. Implement site reporting. Implement site reporting. This is Tuli, stand by for site reporting. Can you see me? Implement site reporting. Site reporting. Site reporting. Force displays are not functioning. Force displays no more function. No sim. This is Tuli. Site report is valid. Number of objects is four. So the different steps of a site report, the first thing that you're going to see is a launch notification. Um, if that launch notification is in your field of view, then you would get an LNPI or a launch and predicted impact. Within 60 seconds, we have to look at our indications and determine whether the radar is working or not, or if it's being caused by something else in the environment, or even ourselves. We need to send that information promptly just because once we get that to Missile Warning Center, they also send it higher up and they make that determination whether that object or missile is a threat or not. There's usually a lot of other things going on, so we'll have either the radar breaking or your monitor goes down, and there are certain steps and actions that we have in place where they know how to prioritize those events. So Chief of Training is a great job just because you work really close one-on-one -on -one with what will soon be your space operators. So how well you do and how much you put into them is how much they're going to put out into the mission. It is awesome to see like people develop and just really get into the role. Everybody that I've trained has had a positive attitude about either fixing mistakes or like they're willing to redo it again and like that's just awesome to see because I know that they're just trying to be better for the job. This is Thule. There are no mission indications in the system. Requesting permission to reset the missile number. Thule, you have permission to reset your missile number. You have Mike Whiskey. You have Lima Whiskey. Thank you. The most rewarding part of my job for me is making a unit or a process uh, more streamlined and better than when I found it. Uh, you're dealing with a lot of data points and there are sometimes there's things that aren't so obvious in the data that being analytical and looking for patterns and trends will have things that you wouldn't see at face value but are important to the mission and being able to uh, bring that to the forefront can change uh, uh, situations. However, there's still room there to just take in the, the beauty of nature and really appreciate that as well. Uh, I, I would have to say the roof of the radar uh, is the best view of all Thule. So right in front of uh, this particular radar is a fjord out there where there's four glaciers that meet. Uh, and from what I'm told, this is the only place in the world where four glaciers meet into one fjord. Uh, so it's absolutely stunning and gorgeous up there. After being in a uh, building with no windows and uh, artificial lights, to come out and get the fresh air and see this amazing vista and the glaciers and the fjord is really spectacular. It's tough being away from family because trying to share things that I'm experiencing and not being able to have them right there to talk to. Um, however, these small units, it really feels like a family where uh, they listen to what you say, what you care about, they tend to care about as well. Um, it is an isolated place. It is not easy to live. You're, you're going to forego a lot of creature comforts, but so is everyone that's here and everyone tries to come together and you start to realize that you are trying to make the place better not only for you but for others as well. So the fellowship within 12 Swiss, or as we like to call ourselves, the Archies, named after the Arctic Fox out here, is extremely close uh, and tight-knit. And really day to day it's, it's kind of a mutual suffering that everyone and hardship that everyone has that really keeps people close. Within our heritage hall, we have a large white wall, 
And on that white wall, we have Archies from past uh, years that write their name, any quotes or anything like that, so they can have a, at least a permanent part of them that still remains here. And we can remember everyone that came before us. So as part of the tradition, one of the very last things you do when you leave Thule is that you sign the wall and you do your final walk out that hallway and go through the turnstiles to never return uh, back to the radar. So it's, it's one of our greater traditions we have specifically here at the radar. Do you have any idea what you're going to write when you do it? I'm still thinking about that right now. I got some, I got some runway left in me, so we'll see how, how the stories change. <laughs> well, you know, being away from my, my son and my wife, while certainly difficult, I, I did volunteer to come out here, um, and my wife understood it as well. And we certainly had the conversation that this was an opportunity uh, for both of us uh, and, and, and a leadership challenge for me to come out here and kind of test my skills. We'd like to say that everything's harder up in Thule, uh, and that is absolutely true. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. And so anyone that's absolutely interested in testing out who they are and finding their character, I highly recommend this assignment for anyone.